Okay, I'm going to try to do something new. And I just want to do a quick video, a run through the book of Galatians. This is an old Bible, probably the first Bible that I used to take notes. I had one Bible that I used before this one, but it wasn't a wide margin. But this is my third edition of the Common Man's Reference Bible. And this is the one I got when I really started taking notes. And I just want to do a quick run through, show you some of my old notes. There's like, uh, when I first started taking notes, I would just leave like a bunch of little comments by the words, not as many references as I do now. So maybe you'll like that style better. But okay, let's do a quick run through the book of Galatians. Okay, Paul an apostle. Not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So, Paul an apostle. He's the least of the apostles. He's God called, unlike the Pope. You see, I would put little comments like that. He's the least of the apostles. And then I got up here, apostle to the Gentiles. And I got some uh, verses to go along there. And then... Verse 2 here, and all the brethren which are with me into the churches of Galatia. So we should be locally associated with other saints. It's a gift to be able to uh, locally associate with other saints. And then I've got in verse 2, Colossians 1.24, 1 Corinthians 12.13. It'll show you the church. There's, a, there's the born-again believers that make up the church. And then there's churches. And then, verse 3, Grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you need a daily grace, daily peace, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. So, Jesus gave himself. He laid down his life for the sheep. John 10, 16, 7. Gave himself. It said five times, and no grace without the death of Jesus Christ. So there you go on that. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Uh, churches are trying to bring in this present evil world is what I put. So that's through, you know, they're, they're trying to reach the lost with what's bringing the lost down in the first place, which is worldly junk. That's what's bringing the lost world down is the world, and Christians are trying to reach the world with the world, which makes no sense, really. Okay, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. So, the men preaching this gospel move some from the true gospel which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And down here, I've wrote, we're delivered, delivered from this present evil world, out of temptations from every evil work, 2 Timothy 4.18, from this body, Romans 7.24, so great a death, 2 Corinthians 1.10. The wrath to come, 1 Thessalonians 1.10. From fear, the power of darkness, Colossians 1.13. And then I have wrote down here for verse 6. Let's see what verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Verse 6, I've wrote, Soon after salvation, Satan sends a gospel pervert to lead you astray. And that's what happened to me. You know, you'll get somebody that comes to you and tries to get you to believe a perverted gospel. All right. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. But if I through the law am dead to the law, but if I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. So we are judicially dead. When we got saved, our spirit was quickened, that is, made alive, 
but our flesh was crucified with Christ. And that's why he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we live in this earthen vessel. We got a life spirit and a dead body. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So the man who refuses to accept Christ frustrates the grace of God. And if you could live right, if you could live good enough to go to heaven, then Jesus Christ died in vain. All right, chapter 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? And I wrote, uh, bewitched over here. It's someone teaching false doctrine. If they're teaching false doctrine and they trick you, then they've bewitched you. And they're pulling you away from the truth. And I wrote, Hollywood glamorizes sin in sitcom titles. Because, you know, they got that old show, Bewitched. And they've got numerous shows with witches on TV. All right. This only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you get the Holy Spirit in you by living right? Or did you get the Holy Spirit by believing the gospel, putting your faith in Jesus Christ? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? After you got saved, after you begun in the Spirit, are you now keeping yourself saved by living right in the flesh? The works of the flesh do not cancel out salvation. The bad things you do in the flesh after salvation don't cancel out your salvation. The good things you do in the flesh after salvation don't keep your salvation. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you in the Spirit, to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness." You see, a religion of do is works. A religion of done is faith. And that's a pure religion. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Saved by grace through faith. He is a type of your salvation. Know you therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. So you are a, a, a spiritual child of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel under Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. It didn't say to him the death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel to Abraham was this gospel. In thee shall all nations be blessed. And that's not how he got eternal salvation. The gospel isn't limited to salvation. The gospel is good news, glad tidings. So the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, it's the scripture told Abraham. The scripture preached before the gospel unto Abraham. But at that time, Abraham didn't even didn't even have what we've got. He didn't have all the all the the Bible. He didn't have what God said wrote down. God spoke to Abraham. So, right here, it's giving attributes to the Scripture. The Scripture's alive. It's giving attributes, uh, characteristics to it like it's alive. So, then they which, are, they which be of faith are blessed with faith, faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now, Paul was according to the law blameless. And to keep the law, you had to have faith, and you had to have a bloody animal sacrifice for when you broke the law. And then I've got up here, when you live by the law, you're under a curse. You cannot be justified. You cannot live by faith. And then I've got, why is that so? And you can look up all those verses there. Just doing a quick run through. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. And then the, the just shall live by faith. 
We're not saved by the law. We're not saved by keeping the law. Nobody was ever saved by keeping the law because nobody could keep it perfectly. And, you know, the law doesn't save. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the Lord Jesus. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, not through works. Anybody who accepts Jesus Christ inherits the promise. We get in on the promise. We don't take the place of the Jews, but we get in on it. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So, covenant given to Abraham, what was it? Physical inheritance of land, a promise of an offspring, and unto thy seed forever, an eternal promise. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So the law couldn't bring any promise. I wrote down inheritance are passed down by promise even today. The seed of the covenant is Christ. Wherefore then serveth the law, it is added because of transgressions, to the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So Abraham got the promise directly. And where it says this in the hands of a mediator, that would be Moses. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. There's one God. So let's skip forward a little bit here. But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So by faith, it's by faith. The law is our schoolmaster. Since faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. Here's some pretty good looking notes here. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So you're a child of God when you believe the gospel. As for as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And that's not water baptism. That's the spirit baptism. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Ephesians 2, 6. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So we are all the same in Jesus Christ. Now, this, this doesn't change you physically. Where it says neither male nor female, when you get saved, you're still a male or a female. This isn't a gender neutral thing here. And I mean, physically, you're still a Jew or a Gentile. This is, this, I mean, it doesn't change you physically. This is a spiritual thing. But spiritually, you're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So you get it on, get in on the promise. And up here, I've got a couple of things written down. Baptismal regeneration. Because people uh, take verse 27, make you think baptism saves. Wrote down seven, bap there's seven baptisms in the Bible. And not all of them have to do with water. And uh, that's where people get messed up. They take the verses about the spirit baptism that happens at salvation, and they make that water baptism. And I've got wrote up here, gender, gender neutral, a lie. It is a lie. Uh, Post-millennialism, that's wrong. It's pre-millennialism. And Romans 11, 25 through 26, that shows you God's not done with Israel. Okay, then chapter 4. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. 
but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So, you are born wrong and must be born again. You have to be made a son of God by adoption. There are different kinds of sons of God. You got the angels who are sons of God. Adam was called a son of God. Christians are sons of God. And once you are born again, you become a direct creation from God. Uh, and because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, if you haven't, Receive the Spirit of God, then you're none of His. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? So if you're known of God, when you get salvation... Why are you trying to go back under the law when you've already got salvation? And Seventh-day Adventists deceive new converts because you observe days and months and times and years. You're trying to do all these things for the law. And Paul says, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. He's pretty much saying if they go back under the law, then what he's, he's doing is a waste even though he really doesn't believe that because he, uh, he said he, uh, his labor is not in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. You have not injured me at all. He's saying enjoy your liberty in Christ, and uh, he's not injured at all because Paul didn't take things personally. And then, in my temptation, which was in my flesh, he despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. So Paul had a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble, and the Galatians could see it. And they would have plucked out their own eyes and given them to him, because he had bad eyesight, as people say. And he says, Am I therefore become your enemy, because I tell you the truth. Many times people think that uh, you're the enemy, because the truth hurts. So don't shoot the messenger. Let's skip forward a little bit here. We got a good page. So if you're depending on the law, then you're lost and become a debtor. For if I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. If you're relying on that circumcision to save you, then they were a debtor to do the rest of the law. And Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. If you're trying to be, uh, live a good life to be saved, then you're fallen from grace. This doesn't mean you lose your salvation. Because if you're saved, then there was a point where you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Your faith saved you. But if you're relying on your works, you're fallen from grace. I'm going to skip over to here. Here's some good notes right here. Uh, some of the best verses in the Bible. Galatians 5, 16. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Showing a Christian can walk in the flesh. It's possible for a Christian to walk in the flesh, even though he shouldn't. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So it's a war. The spirit versus the flesh. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now these are sins Christians can commit when they don't walk in the spirit. Look at this. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. And I had wrote down iPhone idolatry. That's a big thing today. Witchcraft. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So you may not be casting spells, but if you're a rebel, you're, you're doing witchcraft as a Christian. Hatred. Do you hate other people? 
1 John 3, 15, it says, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Variance, and I like Hoffman's definition of that. Variance means the alteration of something formerly laid down in writing. Emulation, you know, comparing yourself to others. Are you in a rivalry with another Christian on who will be the greatest? Wrath, be slow to anger, Proverbs 16, 32. Strife. Uh, uh, you know, where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work, according to James. It's earthly, sensual, devilish, as he says. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which commit such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, that doesn't say not be saved. This has to do with your inheritance in the kingdom. You miss out on millennial inheritance you'll still go in the kingdom but you won't be ruling over cities but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law so chapter six let's look at some things in chapter six brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So, are you going to help a brother get back on his feet after he slipped up and done something wrong? Or are you just going to continue to put him down and act like you're too good for him? Consider yourself, lest you also be tempted. The same thing could turn around and happen to you. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, so prefer others before yourself. For Christ, he pleased not his own self. For if a man think himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work. How do you do that? Check it with the Bible. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear, bear his own burden. Let him that is taught... Let him that is taught... In the word, communicate unto him that it that teacheth and all good things. So communicate. You know, this is referring to, you know, giving to the person that's teaching you. So, I, you know, I say a lot against money. People always wanting to give money. But it is biblical to communicate to the person that's teaching you. Give something to them physically when they give you something spiritually. And here in this chapter, you have the doctrine of sowing and reaping. Be not deceived. Paul's constantly saying, be not deceived, because uh, it's possible for a Christian to be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And I wrote, walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You are either deceived or you are straight up mocking God. And this is the way I used to write notes. This was back when I first started. I, I really don't like to write all this stuff now because it's just already in my head. I don't need to write it down. I usually like to just write verses and things like that I might not remember. That way I can save space. But I'm just showing you this as kind of just for fun. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And then, <clears throat> you see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. Paul wrote it large because he had bad eyes. That's what people say. That may or not be why, but that's what I had wrote down. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only, lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. So these people are evil inwardly, they're fake outwardly, and all they care about is uh, making a fair show in the flesh, And the but the right doctrine brings persecution. They don't teach the right doctrine because it doesn't make you look good. It makes you look bad to the world. For they, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. So I've wrote down, if they could convince you to go back under the law, then it boosts their reputation. If they, can, if they could get a true believer back then to be circumcised, 
to keep the law, then they could go to their friends and glory and say, look, I got another one. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. If you are crucified with, you're crucified with Christ, that's salvation, if you're saved. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision of anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Neither one of these things can make you new creatures, circumcision or uncircumcision. A new, being a new creature is, what's matter, is what matters, and that's what takes place at salvation. God makes you a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. So the cross brings peace. Colossians 1.20, And having made peace by the blood of his cross, from henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Paul uh, was beat with rods, thrice beaten with rods, five times received I forty stripes, save one. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 34 Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. But this has just been a quick look at my notes in my old Bible, the third edition Common Man's Reference Bible. I just wanted to go through and just for fun show you how I used to take notes. And I think it's better if you... <clears throat> Save most of the room for references and things like that because you're going to get to where, like, a lot of this stuff I've wrote down is stuff that I just I just know and I remember it, and I don't really need it wrote down. And it's took up a lot of space. See, I have no room to write any more references here or here. But if that's how you like to do, then just do that. You don't have to do it like I do it or like anybody else does it. You can be yourself. And take notes, make the Bible your Bible, make it how you want it to be. <clears throat> but this is, I guess, been just a quick little look at Galatians.